Hello, we're here with Addie Adwell, who is a nurse at Harborview Medical Center and a member of 11, uh, SEIU 1199 Northwest. Um, and she'll be talking about King County Proposition 1, Harborview Medical Center Health and Safety Improvement Bonds. Would you like to go ahead with your uh, five minute introduction? Yeah, thanks so much for having us um, and for your consideration of endorsing yes on the Harborview Prop 1 ballot measure. Um, uh, now more than ever, Harborview Medical Center is critical for anchoring this region's health and safety, um, especially as the pandemic shows no signs of stopping. Um, and I can say uh, from myself and all of my other frontline workers, we've been working really hard for the health and safety of this region and continuing to work really hard. Um, this 20 year bond is really vital to preserving the physical structure of Harborview in the event of a catastrophic earthquake. Um, I'm sure people know that Harborview is the region's only trauma one center. Uh, it is exactly the place you would wanna go if there were a, a significant seismic event and also the buildings um, need to be seismically upgraded in order to be safe in the event of a catastrophic earthquake. Um, Harborview is way more than just the buildings and one of the things that I'm really excited about um, with this bond is the um, capacity to build a really state-of-the-art behavioral health institute which of course would include a building but also an equally important would include a really strong and robust workforce to address the behavioral health needs of our community, which includes some of our most vulnerable citizens, citizens who live without a home, who are homeless, who are struggling with severe mental health disorders and having difficulty accessing those services. This would be um, a huge benefit. And as a nurse who spent my entire career in behavioral health and substance use disorder, I think this is such an important asset to have in our community. Great, thank you so much. Um, so now we're gonna move into questions and answers uh, um, uh, about this Proposition 1. Uh, board members, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand. Summer. I, I was really excited to hear about the behavioral health uh, building and um, workforce. And <laughs> can you talk more about that? Because I think that is so incredibly crucial. Unfortunately, my son had to be at Herberview once uh, for a uh, orbital fracture and the people next door to him, one person had been shot that was homeless, another person had been um, flown in through a helicopter for an overdose, um, an intentional overdose. And so I saw just my short, short time there with um, just one night, how many behavioral, how many mental health issues were coming in the door as well as physical. And was really excited to hear that it's not just buildings, um, but also putting money into that for this, um, for this uh, vote. Yeah, I, so thanks for sharing that. And um, I think the Behavioral Health Institute will have an educational component attached to it to make sure that the um, workforce needs in our community are being met to have the capacity to address the behavioral health issues that are manifesting in our community. Um, and I, I'm um, I think Chris has some more information about all of the other components. Um, so I'll introduce, uh, we have Chris Lampkin here as well. Uh, he's from SEIU 1199. Go ahead, Chris. Hi. Um, yeah, Summer, you're absolutely right. And Addie, thanks for that handoff. Um, we know before the pandemic, we were in a behavioral health crisis in our community. And if we want to actually invest in a solution, the Behavioral Health Institute is that solution because we can't just say, 
we need behavioral health care workers to go out and address it because there isn't that workforce and this behavioral health institute will be that down payment to allow us to open up the doors to let people who want to help get the training they need the education they need to be able to provide that behavioral health to our community that we so desperately needed before the pandemic and with the effects of the pandemic going to be long lasting and severe this care is going to be even more crucial than before. Thanks so much. Barbara. Hi, can, let's see. Um, can you hear me? Do I have my, my okay, great. So um, I, there's not enough good I could say about Harborview and UW Medicine and the whole institution. And um, I, I was a patient for orthopedic trauma uh, some years ago, and I had a year of follow on. And so I found myself uh, for a year, picking my way through the, ho the hospital, uh, kind of uh, week in, week out and got, you know, you get you get to look around and you, you get to see what's going on. And I my question is more about uh, how can you help us put our radar up to help you support getting this passed? Because it's a very big number. The, the, the number on this, getting this approved, not shall we say accepted or not rejected, um, it's got a big price tag on it. And I want to know if you can, um, if you can add any words or you wanna film any words um, that will help uh, put, you know, put the best face on that. Um, and I say that with, you know, all po with the most positive thing I can say, it's actually because um, I'd like to help. Yeah, and Andy, I'll pick this one if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, that's great. You know, everyone we've talked to has love for Harborview. Uh, Harborview is a trauma one hospital for not just our area, but for four states. So across the region, it is well known um, and provides top notch care. Even my friends from across the country say, oh, that's the Gray's Anatomy Hospital, isn't it? And it sure is. And you asked about how, we can, how we can get out uh, the um, word about this. You know, going back to the DNC, uh, I think we might have all heard, we have to do the work, right? There's no um, taking anything for granted. We have to talk to all of our neighbors. We have to talk to every single voter we can about what Harborview means to us and what it can mean to us going forward and that vision that we all need to link arms to make happen. So we've um, the campaign uh, website I dropped in the chat, folks can get yard signs. Um, we just brought on a wonderful new campaign manager who's going to be setting up phone banks. I know uh, we have members at the hospital who are excited to reach out to the public and let them know about the opportunity to really invest in what I think is one of the crown jewels of our community, Harborview Medical Center. Couldn't agree more. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Kiley. Hi, I was wondering if you could um, elaborate a little bit about the seismic retrofitting. Um, it seems wild to me that we, um, that like the trauma one center for four states isn't up to code now. It's a little concerning just to hear that now. So you could talk a little bit about that. I'd be interested to hear. Thank you. Sorry, that was really clear. Yeah, no, go ahead, Chris. Okay, I am by no means an uh, uh, expert in earthquakes or seismology or whatever that word is supposed to be that I just mangled. Um, but you know, communities make investments in their public health, their safety net hospitals, doing the best they can. And so when Harborview was built decades ago, no one was thinking, how do we make this building last uh, through the big one? And as we've gone through, uh, we've seen things like the viaduct. Um, having to be torn down because it wasn't seismically sound. We don't want to tear down Harborview and we have the opportunity to make the investments and in those seismic retrofits to make sure that in a gigantic earthquake, Harborview is the place that will be there for you if you're injured. So I 
can't give you all the details about how did this happen, but we know that we have a choice about fixing it now. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions? I have one, um, if there are no others from folks, but uh, uh, so the bond, as I was reading through it, it was talking about, or I didn't get to read the whole thing, uh, but it would go towards increasing hospital beds or, or how does that work um, in either one of you? Um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Uh, I imagine there's more space to be added, but part of the bond does go towards increasing hospital beds. And um, this is also really necessary. Harborview operates at 100% capacity almost all the time. And especially now in the middle of a pandemic and also in the summer, which is when we see most of our major trauma come through our doors, we're at 100% capacity all of the time. Um, more beds means we can just provide more of our really skilled trauma care and critical care to more of the community. Great, thank you. Any further questions? I have, um, uh, I guess, another question. Uh, What other types of patients does Harborview serve? I know we talked a little bit about, um, I mean, are there, is it like a center that serves a large amount of um, low income individuals or immigrant immigrants? Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to, um, Harborview has a massive mission statement, which I'm not gonna be able to repeat verbatim, but I will say Harborview is the safety net hospital for our region. And we are committed to serving people who have low or no income. We're committed to serving people who are refugees or immigrants to this country. We're committed to serving people who have been um, or who are survivors of um, sexual assault or sexual violence. We're committed to serving people who live with substance use disorder. Um, we're committed to um, serving people who are homeless in our communities. So it, it's a very long mission statement full of, act, those are actually groups that are listed in the mission population of Harborview. And the people who work at Harborview serve that mission statement. Great, thank you. If I could just add as well, uh, Eddie, that's 100% right. In addition, if you are in a serious car accident, or if you are on a fishing uh, ship in Alaska and you are horribly wounded, they're taking you to Harborview. Harborview is the trauma one center, not just for our region, like I said, but for four states. And they don't ask uh, about your income. They say you need critical life-saving care. We're taking you to the best. You're going to Harborview. So uh, folks, um, like we heard earlier, uh, broken bones, uh, burns. There's a fantastic burn unit at Harborview that's world renowned. Um, Harborview does not discriminate, but they provide the best care possible. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions? We have about six minutes left. I have another one. Um, so this is going to be, it, it authorizes a property tax increase. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Um, I know it's, uh, I, I thought I saw somewhere that it was maybe eight cents per thousand. Is that? I'm, yeah, so uh, there's currently a bond for Harborview that property tax owner or property owners are supporting right now that's about to end um, and so this would replace that one and it would be an increase so on a six hundred thousand dollar home here in king county the average homeowner would pay about 68 dollars a year great thank you further questions I'm all out of questions, so that was really great, guys. Um, would you like to go ahead with, uh, I don't know who wants to do the one minute wrap up, but feel free, um, let people know uh, why they should vote approved. 
Um, Chris, you can do it if that's okay. Happy to support you on this, Addie. Thank you. Um, as you all heard from Addie, the nurses and healthcare workers who work at Harborview every day on the front lines of the pandemic, they love taking care of the community and they want to know that the community has their back and letting them work in a safe uh, place that will be there if there is an earthquake so that they can keep providing the life-saving care that we all so appreciate them for. This is not just about supporting healthcare workers though, it's also about supporting our community and making the crucial and needed investments in our behavioral health system that benefits all of us. We never know when we might need those services, when any of our families might need that help, and we want it to be there for all of us, no matter who we are, what we look like, or where we come from. Great, thank you both for being here this evening. We really appreciate it.